Welcome to another educative episode of Healthy Living. I am Lillian Ambi. Humans interact with the environment constantly. These interactions affect quality of life, years of healthy life lived, and health disparities. Des this brings me to our today's topic. Environmental sanitation, a key to healthy living. The World Health Organization defines environment as it relates to health as all the physical, chemical, and biological factors external to a person and all the related behaviors. Environmental health consists of preventing or controlling diseases, injuries, and disabilities related to the interactions between creating healthy environments can be complex and relies on continuing research to better understand the effect of exposure to environmental hazards on people's health. Maintaining a healthy environment is central to increasing quality of life and years of healthy life. Globally, 23% of all deaths and 26% of deaths among children under the age of 5 are due to preventable environmental factors. Environmental factors are diverse and far-reaching. They include exposure to hazardous substances in the air, water, soil, and food, natural and technological disaster, climate change, occupational hazards, the built environment. To further talk about my topic, I have a guest in the studio who will educate us more about our health and our environment. Let's go on a short break. After the break, you'll meet my guest. Thanks for staying tuned. Like I said earlier, I have a guest in the studio. He's an environmental activist. He's comrade Akande Daniel Babatunde. You're welcome to the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Nigerians. Can we meet you, comrade? Yeah, I'm Akande Daniel Babatunde by name, an environmental activist and also an environmental health officer. Wow, that's good. Mr. Daniel, can you please tell us how our environment can affect our way of life? Uh, well, you know that uh, as human beings, we actually live in the environment. And the most things that environment entails is what we interact with every day. Like the air in which we breathe, like water in which we, con we take, uh, like soil, like everything, like, like plants and others. Those are the things that environment contains. And if, as a human being, you relate with the environment in the way that is not, uh, won't be good enough, like when you're defecating in, in and around the premises, it's also actually going to have effect on the health of the populace in that, uh, very, in that community. And that means that anything you give to the environment, actually it must give it back to you. So that's how environment affects the health. If you make, if in the uh, quest of making fire, you know, maybe through process of making food, trying to cook. When you make fire, it also emits some kind of gas, gas, and uh, I mean gases that also affect human health. At the primary level, it can also maybe the mono, the, mono, uh, the carbon monoxide. At the primary level, it can affect the human uh, body. I mean the nasal cavity, and it also have. Uh, tertiary and secondary effects, which is if it's photochemically react in the atmosphere, can lead to greenhouse effects, uh, global warming, and climate change too. So those are the what we use in the environment actually have effects on on the health of the, of the people. Okay, are you trying to tell me that? Okay, you know our parents then they don't know anything like gas mm. stoves, and aside even the stove, its stove also has its own smoke. Very well. I'm talking about those old people in the villages that use firewood to cook. And if you observe then they live more than us. They are age age wise than us that use gas these days. So how does that have effect on then the firewoods they use to cook? Uh, the point is that uh, you cannot con uh, compare the level of the population then with what we have in presently. Uh, in the olden days the population of the people are very minute, which means the effect of what they generating at that, as at that time 
is very minute. Most of the, about 90 or 80 percent of the world pollution presently is caused by uh, private organizations, by companies, all these industry. And uh, that's part of what industrialization has brought to our existence. So those are the major effects. Those are the, com the, the companies uh, actually have more impact, more effect on the environment, as in their activities actually poses more threats to the environment than the individual and the communal, uh, at the communal level. Okay, you know the rainy season comes with so many diseases mm. like hepatitis A, malaria, and typhoid, and so on. Mm. So can you tell us how we can take care of ourselves, our environment in this season? Uh, well, uh, first and foremost, someone must be conscious of the environment he, or he lives in. And what do I mean? Someone at this rainy season period, someone have to know that number one, you are, they are not dispose your waste in the water channel or in drainages, and what that's that's part of what most of our people are doing presently. They dispose their waste into the water body, and it gives it back to them by causing flooding and others in the society. So if you and if you are in the if you are trying to do something like that and then dispose your waste, you have to dispose it sanitarily, you know. And also, the water itself, if you want to consume water, you know, so many people consume water, river water and others. If you want to consume water, you consume water that is already treated, either through boiling or through use of chlorine or that has been treated. It's not that you just fetch water and take. So we, we, most of these hepatitis A and hepatitis B is actually to the consumption of uh, uh, contamination through the consumption of food. I mean, and contaminants water, through the contam even food the and water. Too. Yeah. That's okay. It. Okay. Like there are some areas that when the rain is falling, you see them dumping the refuge, as in like the passage, no drainages, mm -hmm. where the water passes, so mm -hmm. that the water will take. It's far. Yes, mm -hmm. will take it very far. Is that bad or is that oh, advisable? It's is even an offense under the. Uh, environmental gas search, the official gas search, I mean the hacks that uh, bags the profession, is actually an offense. You don't dispose your waste indiscriminately or dumping it in the waterway. Actually, it poses more risk on to the populace and also the water, uh, aquatic lives in the water. And itself, aquatic life uh, is something we have to even f focus in other way, you know, in the other round. I mean, the, the, the aquatic life, are this, the fish, are the fishes in the ocean are what we consume as human beings. So if we dispose a toxic you know, uh, waste in the water body, and that's, you know, the, and it has effects on the fishes and the water, you no know, aquatic lives, and you as a human being still going to consume those, uh, those animals, actually it's going to be a very, and it's going to be, to affect the health. And also, it kills, most of the chemicals, you know, when you dispose things, you know, it might be a chemical substances or other, when you dispose them into the water, water body, it's half effects on the aquatic life. It kills the aquatic life and it's making them go extinct. Uh, we, we've seen so many agitations around the world, people conversing of the need to protect our ocean. And there's been a, a, a very tedious work in this kind of uh, the environment we are in the parts of the world because of the uh, backwardness, uh, uh, nature of uh, backwardness and the, and the others. Okay. What, what about those that don't stay in the areas that actually have a, there are some places that they provide an atmosphere where you drop your refuge. Mm -hmm. There are some areas that whenever you go, you don't see those things. Okay, let me give you instance, places like Places that advance, like Metama, Wusi, and the rest, they have their basket where they drop their refuge. Sometimes those that dispose them don't actually come to get them on time. Yes. You see, they to be filled up and they'll drop some, like on the floor. Yes, yes. Okay, what about those that the water will come and move, like those that drop? For them, those people that don't come in time to come and pick those things, and those people that don't actually have where to drop their refuge. Uh, actually, most Nigerians are not even aware that. Uh, Waste disposal is even the, the responsibility of the government, most especially at the local level. It's actually in part of the, the Nigeria Constitution, I think section one, uh, subsection F, uh, the Constitution of 1999, yeah. 
well, it's included that the local governments have to take care of the waste in the in, the, in, the, in their environment or in their in their area. And uh, in the absence of that, I think one of the problems we are facing through that is the privatization of the of these uh, most of the environmental services like waste management yes. itself. Mm -hmm. We've seen governments of the days of the day privatizing most of these. Uh, 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 services to private their friends and others, yes, and they are not doing this to the best, to to, to with their own strength. And they are even uh, uh, employing people that are not even, you know, skilled. You can imagine someone packing waste, a waste collector not using protective devices. Uh, is somewhat uh, uh, disheartening in this kind of uh, that kind of situation. It's very disheartening. So those are those are the things we find ourselves in this kind of. Uh, uh, environment we are all in this kind of the world. So the solution to that, in the absence of that is, because you cannot keep wasting your environment, either you cannot burn it, that's number one. And, if you, want, to, and <laughs> if, if you are to dispose it, you have to be in an approved site. They are approved site by the government that these are the what places... What if you don't have? That's what I'm trying to say. If, what if the area doesn't have that? Yes, well, you can also bury your waste. You can use bury. You can use that method. You can bury your okay. waste actually, and that's I think is is not actually the safest method actually, because of the level of table water in so many of other parts of the world where they have high level of uh, water table. So in that kind of environment, you cannot actually doing uh, the practice such a uh, method. But actually, in this kind of environment, we can still do, we can still bury our waste. But it's not that we should dispose them indiscriminately and become an eyesore, inviting rodents and reptiles and others and flies to the environment. It's arbor snakes and others, and it becomes very obnoxious, and it won't be good enough to have such an environment. Okay, back to the untreated water that you were talking about. Are you trying to talk? There are some people that take rainwater. Like when they stop mm. the rain, they don't even uh, boil it, and so is that one? They feel it's natural. Is that actually bad for the rainwater? Oh, well, uh, in this kind, is this part of the world we are used to rainwater actually. <laughs> uh, but any rainwater that falls and touches one's roof is no longer pure. And most of the time, if it's to be a, an environment where the level of air pollution is much. Even though you are drinking rain water in that environment, you are drinking toxic uh, no, water, something that is toxic to your, to your health. So it's not actually the, the safest, actually. But if the person can boil it with the level of education <laughs> or sensitization, if the person can boil it, it still have uh, some coffee. I think it, can, it, it will still be okay. Okay, okay, mm. okay. We'll go on a short break, and when we we'll come back, we'll continue on our topic. Cut a slice of the north central Nigeria with this raw mix of cultures, treasures, and amazing people. Bask in the vibrant glory of the beauty of nature with striking landscapes. And that's the best from agriculture commerce and entrepreneurship put in a mix of local politics and governance from a resourceful people with amazing lifestyles and you are right in the center of the northern Nigeria North Central Journal a compendium of people places news and views all in an amazing mix that bears it all only on television Nigerian back to the show thanks for staying tuned in case you are just joining us we are talking about the topic environmental sanitation a key to healthy living 
and with me in the studio is comrade Daniel Babatunde. He has been doing justice to our questions. Once more, thank you for coming, Mr. Right, Babatunde. Okay, I want to ask, what's the safest way to cook if we can't use firewood? We can't use, even the stove, we use the normal local stove, sometimes when you off them. Uh, let me ask that first. When you off the stove, you see sometimes smoke. that smoke. Mm. Does it have effect? Uh, very this? well, it has effect. Actually, like I said earlier, it affects the respir uh, res uh, respiratory, respiratory organs yeah. of the body. And it also can do damage to the nasal cavities. Uh, nasal cavity. So in that sense, it's not, uh, uh, the stove, use of stove is not actually advisable. It's not good. No. So what are we supposed to use oh, to cook? The purest or the best way to cook presently in this our own uh, Nigeria <laughs> is gas stove. You can use gas to cook. To cook very well, yeah. Okay. You talked about the government. Mm. Like, is the government's responsibility to provide a space mm. for people to dump their refuge? Also to collect the waste to collect from the our waste. residents. Yeah. So, like now, what is the government really doing about oh, well, <laughs> You've got to be so. <laughs> well, let me say, government, in the last decade, government has done nothing impressive to even talk about in that, uh, in that regard. I think what they are mostly you know, uh, interested in is to give it out, you know, to contract it out to their friends, their gay friends and others, in order to earn more money and get more uh, percentage <laughs> to themselves. Mm -hmm. And that has been what has been on ground. I have a petition on my table presently. If you go to Use Market, you will see a waste bin in front of the GT bar. Yeah. Le Loma is in charge of that waste, and the petition is on my table presently because they are being contracted. The contract was given to them, and they are not doing the job in the right way they should. And those are the kind of things we see when we are, when we the privatize such an important uh, aspect of our of our sector of our of our, of our department, and it's half adverse effect. It's having the effect already because the waste disposed in that uh, area actually. Uh, when rain falls, it washes the, 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 the substances yeah. and others and sink yeah. and all to the nearest farm. No, aside the obnoxious odor, aside being oh, I saw, aside that. being uh, a breeding play, uh, space for factors, for rodents and all that, it also washes, you know, to leaching, it also washes to the nearest farm and people buy vegetable from those, uh, that farm and people consume it and they think they are safe. I know it's a point is part of what we should be talking about. The government has, for the past decade, they have not been doing anything. I think the last time serious things were done, the serious thing was done was the during the Kai 1983, 84, and since 1985 that the government came to an end, despite the fact of, despite all his own limitations. Uh, after that government, everything has collapsed. Even the standard of environmental sanitation and the standard of other health services in Nigeria has deteriorated, has degenerated to zero level, as I'm talking to you. And also, the people that are assigned to do this, let's talk about them too. The, neglect the environmental health officers, they are not even employed anywhere. As I'm talking to you, those private individuals are, they, they like to go for cheap things now. They will like, rather hire a secondary school order that have no knowledge about the environment. But and we have Ministry of Environment. That, that's why I'm telling you that they are actually not doing anything. No. As I'm talking to you now, we 90% of the environmental health officers we are having in Nigeria are not employed. employed. And this itself has effects. Because we, we, we keep talking about the, the health sector. But the health sector itself has suffered a lot. Because the fundamental basis of the health itself, which is the prevention, is not taken care of. It has completely been neglected. For instance, let me give you an example. Uh, the program, uh, the program, this was over by the government, federal government, and some other international agencies. They call it rollback malaria. Has malaria been rolled back in Nigeria today? At all. Uh, that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the answer to it. Because these jobs are given to the, to the, people. To the wrong people. They are actually not treating what is right or what they should have treated. And they are doing what is wrong. You know, malaria still persists in Nigeria. In short, it kills the recent uh, 
studies. Uh, I was uh, going through recently, I think two, two nights ago. We, I learned that the more, uh, pregnant women are in Nigeria are now dying because of malaria. Okay. It kills the fetus and it gives them miscarriage. And it's not only that, it even kills the mother. Those are what we see in this kind of environment. But actually, before a woman gives birth, I'm deviating a bit. Before a woman gives birth, that's why they advise you to go for antenatal on early stage. Mm. You're supposed to treat malaria three times mm. before giving birth. Actually, that's what is being done in the hospital if you go for your antenatal in time. Anyway, my take on that is that the environment has to be taken care of. There is need for environmental sanitation sure. at every level. If environment is being uh, sanitized, we will not be talking about malaria. In one time in this nation, in this country, we have five percent of malaria. Malaria percentage, the rate of malaria was decreased to five percent in this nation. In this nation, there was a time we even eradicated disease like Nyan disease in Nigeria, like smallpox in Nigeria. So it was the era in which these sanitation processes or exercise were on ground that were effectively done in that time. But presently, nobody is doing house to house inspection anymore. But in the other case, <laughs> if you hear Wole Wole is coming, do you know the meaning that environmental health officer is coming to your house? Everybody wants to. Everybody will time. even like to run and ha. Okay, if they so come, yes. because they know that there is need to do something fundamental about it. They, they, they need to improve the, the lifestyle of which they are living. But in the absence of anybody checkmating them, they are now deviating and everybody is doing anything, every, anything they like. And that has itself compared to the problem in the sector. Okay, finally, in your own capacity as an environmental activist mm. and also an environmental officer, mm. what are you doing in your position, your mm. office, to eradicate all these problems Aware. from our environment? <laughs> in Nigeria, we do pro bono work, actually. Uh, and I think I've been on that for the past six years of my life. I, I've been on that. Okay. I actually even have a, a registered company called... Uh, and Green Waves Environmental Consult. And that's what we do. We give education no, to people on the need to live a, that they Healthy deserve life. a better life. They deserve a healthy living. It's not something, it's a fundamental right. It's yes. not something that should be given as privilege. So if those things are not put in place, I think we will we, we, be lacking behind. Okay. Thank you very much you for will, coming to the come. studio, sir. Poor environmental quality has greatest impact on people whose health status is already at risk. Therefore, environmental health must address the societal and environmental factors that increase the, like, the likelihood of exposure and disease. And that's the much we have for you today on Healthy Living. I am Lillian Ambi.